Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Today I'm going to show you audio editing basics in Studio One. If you're new to audio editing or if you know audio editing but you just want to see how it's done in Studio One, this video is for you. All right, we're going to start with a completely blank song here in Studio One. First thing we're going to do is add a track. And we're going to make this a vocal track. We'll name it Vocal, One Track, and we will set the input to input three, which is where my microphone is plugged in. Press OK, and we got ourselves a vocal track. Now, this vocal's blue. That's incorrect. <laughs> I like yellow vocals. OK, now we have a yellow vocal track. Next thing we do is we find the Record Enable button to tell this track I want to record on this track, and then we begin recording. Now, you can begin recording by pressing the Record button here at the bottom, or I've got mine mapped to the backspace key or the backslash key, the one just below backspace on my keyboard. So I'm going to record now. Here we go. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome. <clears throat> hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome to Presonus. Stu Welcome to Presonus Studio One. All right. So we have a piece of audio that has a few mistakes in it, which is a typical situation where you're going to want to do some editing. If we just press play with our space bar. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome. <clears throat> Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome to Presonus Stu Welcome to Presonus Studio One. <laughs> this hit, this hits close to home. Um, when I start my videos, there's usually about three or four takes where I just I can't say the first sentence correctly, and then I, I'm off to the races. So we want to get rid of this first section now. Before we jump in and start editing stuff, there's a couple of housekeeping things I want you to do. Look up here in the top of the window. You'll notice there's a little bracket button here. I want to make sure that yours looks like this. This means it's a combination of the arrow tool and the range tool. I'll show you what those mean in a minute. If you have it like this, then you can only use one of these at a time, and you've got to press a specific keyboard shortcut to switch between them. I don't like that workflow. It's not super great, which is why a few years ago we implemented this button, which combines them into kind of a smart tool of sorts. Um, so that needs to be in place. I'll show you how that works in a second. And then I want you to... Press the number one on your keyboard, the on your just above the letter Q on your keyboard, until this little thing moves around and cycles through until it lands here on the split tool, which is tool number three. Okay, um, we'll come back to why that is in a minute. Okay, now that we have this set up, let me show you how to zoom in and out because that's going to be helpful as well. If you record it and it looks like this and you want this to be a lot wider, the simplest thing is just to put your mouse up here in this little ruler area and just click and drag down. That's going to make it nice and big. Drag up to zoom out, drag down to zoom in. And it's going to center over wherever you selected. Now to scroll left and right, up and down, you use your scroll wheel like normal on your mouse. But left to right, the easiest way to do that is to hold down shift on your keyboard and then scroll up and down. This will move to the left and to the right. I happen to be using a trackpad from Apple. So if I just scroll left and right and up and down with two fingers, it does that for me. If you have a traditional mouse, mouse, then shift plus scroll will allow you to scroll left and right. And then regular scroll will go up and down. We can't go up and down here because there's only one channel, so there's nothing to go up and down to. To adjust the height of this track, you can just click and drag the edge of the track here. Or you can set things down here. There's a whole setting of different sizes I typically just zoom in using this. Another way to do this on the Mac, if I hold down Command and scroll up and down, it'll zoom in and out like that. And on the PC, that would be Control. Okay, so let's get it nice and zoomed in so we can see everything. Beautiful. Now, I want to edit this because this first section is garbage. If we click up here to move the playhead and press play. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome. <clears throat> We got to fix that. We got to get rid of it. This is the part that we want. So the first thing you can do with editing is you can hover your mouse over the left hand side of this. We call it an event and we can click and drag to move the edge. So we're basically deleting this entire section and moving it up to the part that we want. We're trimming the audio. It's the same as if we held our mouse on the top hand portion of this event where it becomes that little crossfade tool and we click and drag and select a section and then press backspace, it deletes it. Those are kind of two ways to do essentially the same thing. Speaking of, when we turn this button on up here, this allowed us to do two things. When my mouse is in the top half of the audio and I click and drag, whoops, and I click and drag, it does a selection 
So it's just selecting different pieces of this audio as specifically as we want. When I'm in the bottom half of the audio, it changes from a crosshair sort of thing down to an arrow sort of thing. And the arrow is specifically for clicking to select that piece of audio and then moving it around. So we're moving the entire chunk of audio. Now, if we hold down Command on the Mac or Control on the PC, the tool turns into a third tool. So not pressing anything, it's a it's the range tool up here, the selector tool down here, and if I hold down Command, now it's this split tool, and if I click, it creates a split. It creates a, basically slices it into two pieces. So I can hold that down and click everywhere, and now I've made all kinds of slices and ruined everything. I'm just pressing Command Z to undo that. So there are many ways to get rid of this piece of audio. The easiest is probably just to use the selector tool, go like this and say, wa-bam, or we can hover over the left-hand side until it becomes this little arrow-looking thing, and then drag it back. That's probably the way you've seen people do it. Okay, now that it's dragged back, let's say we dragged it to here, and now we're going to hit play. So I'm going to put click up here, which just tells, it, tells Studio One where to start playing from. I'm going to press space bar and see how this sounds. Hey, my name is Joe Gill. Hey, my name is... Hey, my name... Not too bad. What if we put it here? Hey, my name is... Hey, my name... Hey, my... Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. It's not too bad. I wanted to show you sometimes, depending on where you put this edit, there will be like a little blippy sound in the audio. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. It's not doing it right here. Let's move it back a little bit, see if we can make it happen. Hey, my... Hey, my... Hey, my name is... Okay, it's behaving right now. Good rule of thumb, regardless of what you do, is once you've got this in place, you'll notice there's a little circle up here on the top corner. This is our fade tool. This allows us to create a fade on this audio so that it fades in to full volume. This is basically a way of preventing little pops in the audio. I'll show you one later uh, what it sounds like. But by doing a fade, we're ensuring that this never goes pop. It ramps up from silent every single time. It's very quick. You don't necessarily hear the ramp. But, hey, my name is... You'll never hear a click in the audio. All right, so that one's fine. Let's keep going. Welcome to Presona Stu... Welcome to Presonus Studio One. Okay, so we want to get rid of this section now. How would you do that? Well, the easiest way now would be just to select it and press delete or backspace. And now we want to move these two together, so we'll just slide this one over. Note that I'm clicking in the bottom section. If I click up here, it just does a selection. That's not helpful. We're clicking down here, which moves it over. And let's see how that sounds. Gilder, welcome to Presonus. That actually works perfectly. Now let's see if we can make it make kind of a gross popping sound. Gilder, welcome to Presona. <laughs> of course, when I'm trying to demonstrate it, it won't happen. Gilder, welcome to Presona. There we go. Gilder, welcome to. You hear that at the beginning of welcome? Gilder, welcome to Presona. That's because of that. There's no fade there. It's also because the edit's bad. We should probably move it to there. But let's just say this was the right place to edit, but it was popping. Sometimes it pops even if you don't see any audio there. Let's just drag that fade and see if that makes it better. Gilder, welcome to Presonus Studio. Perfect. Good rule of thumb also is to make the back end of a file have a fade as well. That way you just, there's just always the chance that a little will happen and it makes your productions or your edits sound amateur if they're there. Now, another way we do this that's even simpler than what I just showed you. Let me just press undo a few times. Let's say we went like this. So we said, Gilder, Welcome to, let's say that's about the timing we want. If I drag this over, as long as these two pieces touch or overlap, I can just press the letter X on my keyboard and it'll make what's called a cross fade. This is where it creates an X shape thingy between the two that makes the first piece of audio fade out and the second piece of audio fade in. So you don't have to manually do fade ins and fade outs. If the pieces of audio are touching, it'll automatically fade them for you. Let's see if there's any sound here. Welcome to Presun. Nope, it's perfect. And it, I've almost never found a crossfade that didn't sound perfectly silent. Welcome to Presonus Studio One. That's super cool. Let's say Studio One. Let's say we don't want that gap between Presonus and Studio One. Well, we can just go right here, delete it, slide this over. Press X to crossfade, and that should sound flawless. Welcome to Presonus Studio One. Mmm, it doesn't. Well, now I'm a liar. Let's try moving it over a little bit. Welcome to Presonus Studio One. Dang it. So let's just undo, undo, undo. 
Welcome to Presonus Studio One. There's something about the way I said it. Let's try it again. Let's let's do this. Let's separate this. Delete. Let's make this one work. Studio. There's a little gap there. Studio. Studio One. Studio One. That might work. Now let's do this and press X. Presonus Studio One. And then we can also move this crossfade around if we find a better spot. Presonus Studio One. Almost. Presonus. That's almost there. Presonus Studio One. All right, cool. You may wonder why is it moving around? A couple of buttons up here you might want to pay attention to. This is the auto scroll button. So if I zoom way in, it's going to auto scroll just basically follows whatever's being played in the software. But sometimes when you're zoomed in, you don't want that on. So I press F to turn that off. So now I can zoom in and it won't move around on me. Studio one, studio one, studio one. So the fact that it ends in an S and begins in an S means I probably just want to leave it like it was originally. Studio One. Presonus Studio One. Yeah, that sounds fine. But those are the ways that you can combine and add things together. Now there's a gap here at the end. Let's drag this back and also do a fade so that there's no pops or clicks in the audio. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome to Presonus Studio One. Very cool. And now it works. Now let's say we there's one other thing that you might want to know, especially if you're doing a lot of a lot of editing of spoken word there's a setting up here called ripple edit if we turn this on whenever we do a selection oh gilder welcome to presonus Stu welcome to presonus studio one so we want to go from this to this we want to get rid of this in the middle if we're careful with our selection when that ripple edit is on when i press delete it automatically slides everything to the right over to be adjacent to what we just to what we just selected. And if I come here and press X, it does a crossfade. And now with just basically two moves, it's pretty much ready to go. Hey, my name is Joe Gilder. Welcome to Presonus Studio One. And then we maybe clean this one up a little bit, throw a fade on it, and we're good to go. Important, be sure to turn this off because if you leave it on and you don't realize it, things will start sliding around and you don't want them to. That's why it's off by default, but good to know that it's there. Now, when you've got these things edited like you want, there may be some other things you want to do. You may want to increase the volume of them. When you've got them selected, there's a little circle in the middle. If you just drag this up and down, allows you to adjust the volume, not of the channel. The fader volume isn't moving. This is just the volume of the audio itself. Or if you want to normalize it, I press option N for normalize. It's alt N on the PC, and that will raise it to where the loudest peak is as loud as it will go without clipping. Um, those are two pieces that can be super handy for you and you can toggle that on and off if you want. But those are the essence, the basic elements of editing in Studio One. I recommend just taking some time to learn how to do zooming, how to cut, and delete things and move them around, how to do crossfades, how to do fades, to where it becomes second nature to you. Because nobody, let's face it, nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I want to be incredible at editing audio. They think, I want to make great content and great music. Um, and if you can get fast at editing, you can just do that more quickly. That's why this matters. It just gets you back to making music as fast as possible. All right, that's it for this video. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. See you.